I am very glad that I have been asked to present my point of view about the Uniform Civil Code. And I shall take not too much of time, maybe 10 minutes, to put forward certain points that we have discovered and seen which are causing inequalities. We are talking about a uniform civil code. We have uniform criminal laws, right? Public nudity. We have got, what is this, public decency acting as indecent in public if you go removing all your clothes. But there are Jain Munis walking around naked all around the country and this act is not applicable to them. That means they are kept out of the purview of the criminal laws. I am just giving you one single example here. You just take a think about it. We are saying criminal laws are applied to everybody. Why not apply to James? Causing physical hurt particularly to minor children is again a criminal offence. Here you have children being put trisul from here to here. No criminal cases. We take people, put the hook and hang them. No criminal case. During Muharram time, they cut the faces of these small children. No criminal case. Just think of it. When you are saying laws are applicable to everybody, whoever, however high and mighty you are, you are not above the law. Think of these laws. Why they are not applied to these people? Again, playing loudspeakers, making noise after 10 p.m. has been specifically banned by the Supreme Court. But for certain religious festivals, there is exemption. So in a country like this, you are going to bring about a uniform civil code. Fine. I am all for it. Because I am for a humanitarian, uniform, humanist, sorry, not humanitarian, yes, humanitarian as well as humanist uniform civil code. I am not for a Manuadi civil code. Please remember that. Those who are talking about a uniform civil code, are they going to say anything about the Hindu undivided family? Because many businesses are run as HUFs because of the tax exemptions and everything thereof. Is this bill going to abolish the Hindu undivided family? I do not know. I do not think there is any proposal. You are going to tackle the marriage laws of a particular community, that's fine, no problem. But last week I remember seeing on the net a family of, I think it was in Aizwal, in Mizoram, where there are 200 and odd members of the family. There is an old man of 65 years who has got 10 wives and 200 members in the family. What are you going to do with a uniform civil court? for a community like that. Are you going to impose it on them? Will they tolerate it? Will they allow it? By all rights, laws should be applicable to everybody. Are you going to bring the tribals, allow them to continue their customs? Or are you going to impose a Manuadi civil code on them? And the opposition to this will come from the Hindu community itself. Because I remember one rationalist friend of mine telling me, I think it was in 1925 or so, when the age of marriage for Hindu girls was raised. The biggest protest was there from the orthodox, upper caste, brahminical families, saying that that should not happen. What about Sati? What about the Devdasi system? which is sanctioned by religion. In parts of Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, they say this girl is 
devadasi servant of god it is not servant of god it is servant of anybody who pays it is another name for prostitution are you going to remove it through uniform civil code these are some of the questions which come before us going back to an example in turkey kamal atta turk brought about a sort of uniform civil code he banned the triple talaq and just two days before banning the triple talaq he divorced his wife by triple talaq just see that so it is not valid from day after tomorrow i divorce my wife through tip, triple talaq today and say from day after tomorrow it is not applicable in this country so that is what they said he did and today we see turkey going back to the same old islamist laws and it is going back to fundamentalism again we are told the portuguese had a very good civil code in goa which is applicable to all citizens of goa regardless of their religion if you are buying a property if a married man purchases the property it will be registered jointly in his and his wife's name but that civil code also says that if a male child is not born to the wife i think some 5 years or something are there yeah 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 within 30 years he can take a second marriage so what are you going to do with the civil code which is something like the laws in goa so these are all the things that we have to see again coming back to the hindu religious customs when you register a marriage under the hindu marriage act the process of registration is only a matter of record that such and such a ceremony has occurred in between the two people it can be according to the customs of the man it can be according to the customs of the woman the registration under the hindu marriages act is a record that such a ceremony has happened if that ceremony is invalid the record is also invalid so there are many many anomalies and abnormalities all over this country for example under the special marriages act first cousins cannot marry whether it's on your maternal side or paternal side but there are customs for example in the community where i was born you can marry your uncle's daughter your mother's brother's daughter in certain communities in tamil nadu and interior karnataka an uncle can marry his niece a man marries his sister's daughter who is almost his daughter and that is a very much permitted thing is a uniform civil code going to make all these out this is a thing which we have to see which is a matter for thinking debate whether this government which is talking about uniform civil code whether it has got the courage to remove all these practices marriage between first cousins from a scientific point of view is equally bad whether it occurs on the maternal side or whether it occurs on the paternal side in fact if it occurs on the maternal side there is a little bit more problem because the mitochondrial dna is the same between the husband and the wife so i am putting this points forward just for you to think about when you talk about a uniform civil code is it going to be a humanist civil code or is it going to be a manavadi civil code or is it going to be a brahminical civil code or is it going to be a patriarchal civil code if you are going to have a humanist civil code with equal rights to everybody then it would be fine but in order to accommodate the majority community and their so called customary beliefs i'm sure that only 
some communities will be targeted and not others. So with this few points which I have thought about, which I have been ruminating about, you say grave injustice is being done to Muslim women. If a man marries four times, has four wives. Is it the concern of you people? Because if one Muslim man marries four times, he is depriving three Muslim men of a wife each. Because at the time of birth, the gender ratio is roughly one is to one. If you have 50 Muslim men and 50 Muslim women, if 10 of them marry, four people each, 40 women gone, for the rest of the 40 only, 10 women are left to marry. Just think of this mathematics before I stop. So, this debate has to go on. A good debate has to go on. Do not target any particular community or their particular usage, but have a humanist civil code in which all people are equal, all people have equal rights, and everybody is treated equally. So, thank you very much for listening to me.